Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa everyone. Hope all of you are doing good. So we are trying this live for the second time because the first time there was some technical glitch. So we are hopeful that this time it works out. I do not see anyone live. So I'm going to quickly check in with my team to see if everything's good, inshallah. All right. Give me a second, I'm gonna hop on till people join up. Um, all right, I would love it if you are joining us live. If you could drop a hi in the comment so I can see that you are here. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'm so happy to see you all live. There was some technical glitch this time, hopping on live. I can see Sister Nizrina is here, Sister Zahra is here. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Apologies for the delay. Um, I guess the first time I tried to run the live, it was so much more smoother. Maybe I had beginner's luck. But this time there was so much technical glitches so i would like to thank everyone who is live right now for you know getting adjusted to the schedule that was shifted let me just check in with my team so if you need anything you can drop a message in the comment and my teammate shaika will be online to help you out um and Sheikha, if you are watching us live, if you can drop a message saying hi on the comments so people will know where to find you. So let me just do a little bit of housekeeping before we hop on to the live, inshallah. Alright, Rabbi Shrahi, Sadri, Wai Sibli, Amri, Rahmi, Ufda, Tamri, Lisani, Yifu, Khali, Rabbana, Zibna, Ilma, Allahumma, Tarkihna, Fiddin. Yes, so that's Shaika everyone. So she is a part of the Alpha Queen team. So if you need anything during the live or after the live, uh, feel free to message her. She will be here to help you out because I'm just going to go dive in because there's so much energy because I'm so passionate about this topic. If you are watching the replay, then drop hashtag Alpha Queen in the replay and I will know that you are watching the replay. And um, let's get started so I named this masterclass ask and it kind of doesn't make if you think about it much sense because there's not much details that is in the name what why did I name it ask so I thought that I will start by saying ask and the tagline for this masterclass is to healing and deconditioning the season, if I can say, the chapter that we are in in Alpha Queen Empire right now as a business is feminine leadership. And I am really disheartened to see how many women question themselves and what they're capable of achieving and how much of impact and influence that they can have in this world just because they are a woman. And I take a strong stand for this because if you see my story, if you follow me, whatever I do, I don't do it putting forth my desires ahead. For me personally, it's more like fulfilling God's vision by being a vessel. So this masterclass, I really do not like to use this terminology because I feel that it has been so overused and watered down so I would like to call this an experience so this masterclass is going to be an experience where we are going to heal and we are going to decondition so we can start living the vision that God has for us because we are not an accident God planned our existence we are God's idea and God will not create anything that is not great. 
So the very fact that the source of our existence, the source of our being is God, is enough to show that there is the seed of potentiality, there is a seed of greatness within us. And I want to specifically talk about how in the context of feminine leadership because I feel this is one of the most subtle but master plan of the devil himself because we know that when Antichrist, the Jal, Lucifer, however you call him, comes back one of his main targets would be women. This has been prophesied in our religion from 1400 years ago. So even when you see the news and the movements, it's all about how the woman should dress, what the woman should do, what the woman should not do, even if it is in a religious setting or a non-religious setting. Because I truly believe that God placed within us the seeds of prosperity and abundance. And if you allow me, inshallah, in this masterclass, I'm going to explain to you how my dear Alpha Queens, my dear sister who is watching this live and watching the replay, how you have within you the seeds of prosperity and abundance. But sadly, when you yourself are struggling to survive in this life of yours, how can you possibly have the impact that you can have in this world for yourself, your loved ones, and on a global impact? I just want to say hi to Nas who's joining in. I'm so happy um, that people are joining in, alhamdulillah. So when you see the, uh, what do I say? The flyer that I created for this, I had so much of flowers going on and I did not put flowers just because it was pretty. It had intentionality and I discussed a little bit of it in my story. So I want a quick game for you. A game quiz whatever when I say the word flower what's the first word that pops in your mind you can let me know in the comments below and I, I would it will be a very interesting uh, discussion when I said the word flower what's the first word that pops in your mind whether you're watching the replay or live you can let me know in the comments okay sister Nizrina says smell okay good smell fragrance amazing sister zahara says beauty all right shaika what about you <laughs> i'm picking her you know it's just so interesting like sister nizrina and sister zahara you all pointed out we for me flower represents yes beauty good fragrance but also femininity femininity <laughs> can be a bit of a tongue twister there of being a feminine sensitive soft but i discussed in the um story if you did watch it how flowers literally control the sustainability of earth you know scientists say that when bees go extinct oh my goodness i just realized right now that the mic has not been plugged in. I'm going to plug in the mic and let me know if you can hear me more clearer, okay? Because I want to give you the best quality of everything. Can you hear me better now or does it even make a difference at all? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> can you hear me or is it better? I would really appreciate your response. Shaika, am I audible? All right, bit better. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So as I was saying, the scientists, according to research, they've said that if the bees go extinct, there would be no pollination and the trees will go missing. And when the trees go, eco the whole ecosystem gets disrupted and the earth basically will become unsustainable. But where do bees go to? Bees go to flowers. Every fruit that bears a seed, before it becomes a fruit, it is a flower. Not necessarily beautiful flower. When we think about flowers, we immediately think about roses, jasmine, you know, all these beautifying flowers. But do you know that 
a fruit before it becomes a fruit that bears the seed of the next generation, it was once a flower. So just like how a flower is so fragile and sometimes it does not even contain so much beauty because the flowers that we use for beautification is not necessarily the flowers that turn out to be fruits. The flowering fruits are usually not that beautiful, don't have a great smell, but then they contain the seeds of the next generation of a particular plant. So likewise, I feel that when we talk about women that's closely associated to flowers in this context or at least the theme that's going on, I feel that it's really underestimated because we always only see things on the surface level. Like how I said, a fruiting flower, a flowering fruit, okay, whatever, you get the idea, right? It's not the most beautiful, it doesn't, it's not the one that has the most amazing smell but it is so impactful if you can say because it carries the seeds of the next generation so when we talk about women it's unfortunate that most of the discussion is about oh can a woman go here can a woman can't go? can she go here can she wear this can she not wear this can she do this can she not do this it's so surface level but in this experience, I'm inviting you to see the womanhood that God has given you on a much deeper level. And I want to talk to you about why I said I truly believe that women have the seeds for prosperity within them. When you look at how God has arranged the ecosystem of this earth, right? Let's look at it as it is without feeling triggered. We know that there is an ayah, there is a verse in the Quran that says that men have a responsibility over women. And a lot of people try to see this in a very negative light and see how this ayah is an indication, this verse is an indication of how women are less, how women are weak. But what if we first get clear on the idea that God loves us, whether we are a man or a woman, he is just to us, whether we are a man or a woman. Can we make it less about us and not get triggered and make it more about God and the guidance that he's trying to teach us? So when you talk about how God has expected a man and a woman to behave in the ecosystem, is that he has given the responsibility of financially providing for a family, the unit of a society on a man. A woman has the option of whether or not she wants to earn, whether she wants to make money, whether she wants to spend and take care of her family financially, but it's not an option for a man. It is something that has been made responsible, that has been made incumbent upon him. In the sense that if he does not fulfill this role that has been obligated to him by God, according to God's plan, according to God's vision, then he will definitely be held accountable on the day of judgment. Whereas for women, that's not the case. We would be, re we would be rewarded for the extra things that we do, but we would not be questioned as to, oh my God, Shaika, why didn't you have a business? So talking about how women hold the seeds of prosperity, when you see the pyramid of life, I don't know if there's another terminology, we see that people want food to eat, they have shelter and then safety, security, finances for basic needs, the survival pyramid, if we can say, it has been made incumbent upon a man. A woman generally in this context does not have to think more about how am I go going to put food on the plate to provide for my family as much as a man has to because of the obligation and the way that God has ordained this world to work. Do you agree with me? If you do agree with me, drop a one in the chat. Do you get what I'm trying to say here? If you understand what I'm trying to say, drop a one in the chat so I, I know that we are on the same page. 
when it comes to the pyramid of survival the food shelter basic necessities it has been made incumbent by god himself according to his plan according to his vision to be taken care of by a man by default if he does not do that he is held accountable he will be questioned on the day of judgment do you agree do you understand what i'm saying drop a one in the chat before i proceed or if you have any questions this is a good time for you to ask and because the truth of it is this being said can you hear me am i frozen see am i frozen can you hear me cuz this facebook live is a bit trickier than zoom lives but it's more convenient for me if you can still hear me clearly i would truly appreciate if you can let me know in the <laughs> chat i'm sorry there's so much of all right thank you shaika i appreciate that so when it comes to a woman when all these basic necessities are taken care of by a man the woman if you think about it she has more freedom than a man because she does not have this responsibility a woman has more time in her hands to think about things that's beyond the survival pyramid do you see where i'm coming at So when it comes for a man he is obliged to start thinking about putting food on the putting food on the plate taking care of the shelter looking after the basic needs of the family but when it comes to a woman by default because of the way god has set up earth she can hop on to wants she can start thinking about how to improve the standard of living and quality of life for her family by default she can start thinking about how as a family how as a society they can celebrate more abundance and joy in their life because by default the way she is placed she is already above the survival pyramid But then if you are here questioning about are you worthy if you can do it or you know all these basic survival questions of lack and scarcity you're going to not just limit yourself but you're going to limit the abundance that can be experienced by your family just like how if the man of your household decides that you know what I don't want to provide the basic necessity of the family his decision is also going to affect you because now even your survival or if you have children even their experience on this planet earth is going to be threatened so likewise when you decide to step up and show up in your default prosperity code prosperity frequency abundance energy it's not just you who gets to experience his abundance and prosperity but everyone who is connected to you that's the power that god has given you because interestingly just to share a bit of a personal story right recently i moved out here so when i wanted to move out it was not necessarily my husband's idea it was an idea that i had we were already living comfortably we had everything that we required but i felt like hmm it will be interesting to increase our standard of living and quality of life so we moved out to this new place but my husband he did not have the free time if i can say to really think about oh how about increasing our standard of living and quality of life because he was his mind was occupied with his business and the way god has created men because of this responsibility is that they can only process necessarily one thing at a time whereas as women we can process like 100 things at a time and we are good like that's our natural nature 
the natural way God has created us, the nature of a woman versus the nature of a man. And because I decided to lead myself, I not only was able to in, improve the quality of living for myself, but because my husband was connected to me, my sister is connected to me, my family, everyone who is connected to me, everyone gets to benefit, including you who is watching it live or watching it replay. But if I had been stuck in the survival pyramid, questioning my word, questioning if it is possible for me, questioning if, if God's help is available, questioning if, if abundance is ever going to be a choice for me, if I'm going to be trapped in the survival pyramid, do you think I would ever have the possibility of enjoying the abundance and the joy and the prosperity that I'm enjoying in my life right now? No. So it's a choice that you get to make. And I feel that it is talking to, this message is talking to someone right here, right now. It's a choice that you get to make. What are you going to decide? Are you going to keep playing within the confines of the survival pyramid? Or are you going to embrace the nature that God has provided you and not feel guilty for desiring more, for wanting more? And accept it and embrace it as the nature that God has given it. And nurture your nature so that you can benefit and everyone who is connected to you can benefit. I don't know if most of you know about this, but there was a particular phase in my life where I wanted to migrate to a particular country. Right, I wanted to migrate to a particular country and there was a particular course <laughs> on early childhood education that I did. I didn't end up migrating, at least not in this season of my life according to God's plan. But that was my idea. I told, okay, I'm migrating, I want to work, let me take up this course. It was my idea that I brought forth. And maybe this course, whatever I studied, even if I'm never going to work in that field, is going to help me bring up my own children as leaders. And I shared about how I wanted to move out and it was not necessarily my husband's idea because his mind was preoccupied with the survival pyramid. Not to put it down because it's very important. But I got the opportunity because of my nature that God has given me to dream and think big and imagine. Just let the imaginations go wild, girl. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I put forth the idea like, what do you think we move out to this place? It looks nice, blah, blah, blah. Because I embraced my nature. I didn't guilt trip my own self saying that oh my god why do i want more when i'm already comfortable maybe i'm not grateful that's what satan wants because do you think satan wants you to enjoy the bliss whether it be in this world or hereafter no so whenever you get an idea or an imagination to increase the quality of your life and standard of living for you or your others know that this is already god's plan and just move ahead move ahead and it gets to work out because God wants you to be happy he wants you to be smiling he wants you to enjoy the beauty that he has created for you he could have created this earth black and white but he did not because he wanted you to have a good time don't walk around thinking that you are a cursed soul and people relate to the story of Adam and Eve and say how oh my god we were supposed to be in heaven but because of what they did now we are suffering on earth no when god created adam salam, adam he already knew that they are we are going to be on earth for some time because when you go to surah baqarah chapter number two in the quran allah says that allah said that i'm going to create a representative a vicegerent for earth so we are already destined to be in earth for some time. And we also know that after our parents, our first ever parents ate the forbidden fruit, God did forgive them. He taught them the words of seeking forgiveness. So we don't have to walk around with shame and victimhood. Instead, I invite you to open up and see yourself as a soldier. 
as a part of the army of God against the devil and see how you can use your resources, your skills, your talents, everything that God has given you to serve God's vision and not make it so much about yourself because you don't even belong here. We don't even belong here. We belong. This is not home. We belong to God. We're going to go back to heaven. So while we are here, can we set our mindset as we are in the mission of serving God? And when we are in the mission of serving God, the way God has created earth, money is an important part. But if you're going to walk around thinking that wanting more money, which is obviously one of the ways in which you can get access to doing a lot of things, even something as noble as seeking knowledge, as helping the poor people, giving charity, when you're going to walk around thinking that wanting more money or having more money is evil, you're just capping your own potential. Especially as women, because the way devil, the evil people from the jinn kind and mankind, they have conditioned is to think that for a woman to succeed particularly is something that shouldn't be done. And it makes so much sense in the context of the discussion that we've been having, because if women understand their power, it will just benefit the entire humanity. Because by default, we will be starting from beyond the survival pyramid. But the way the devil has tricked us is to put the woman, to confine her inside this survival pyramid by using the skill that God has given for women by default of our nature to imagine, to think and all these things. Instead of using it for us, we are in a spiral using it against us. Instead of thinking of how I can change the society, how I can make this world a better place, how I can serve more people, how can I make myself available more for God's purpose, how can I improve the standard of living and quality of life for my loved ones. Instead of thinking all those kind of thoughts, we are like thinking, oh, is this possible for me? Am I worthy of money? Am I evil for wanting more? Am I an ungrateful servant? Oh, why is my husband treating me like this? How will I get my children doing like this? What can I cook for dinner today? Do I look ugly? Am I too skinny? Am I too dark? Am I too pale? Am I too this? Am I too that? Petty things and we go in circles in the survival pyramid. And because we don't empower ourselves, it's just not us depriving ourselves of what we are able to create in this world. We are also depriving all the people whose lives could have been a bit better, who could have been enjoying more rays of sunlight because they empower themselves because we are trapped. We limit ourselves. We don't see ourselves as people, as soldiers in the army of God. We don't see ourselves as queens. It's that we see ourselves as puppets being played by the circumstances that's presented to us. Which is why I invite you to truly understand the idea that you can create the circumstances that you desire. Which is why I named this brand Alpha Queen Empire. Just by calling yourself a queen, there is a power, there is a responsibility, there is this impact that you can have by being the queen. What if instead of seeing yourself as being played by the circumstances that surrounding you, you start seeing yourself as the alpha queen that you are. And now that you are in your queenship, what are you going to do for the benefit of yourself and your kingdom? So all of our kingdoms are connected to the empire of God. You know, in the pyramid, we have an empire. And within the empire, we have different kingdoms. And different kingdoms have kings and queens. So I myself have a kingdom. I'm the queen of my kingdom. And I'm leading it accordingly. You are the queen of your kingdom. And you have the power within you to lead your kingdom into prosperity and abundance by the circumstances and setting that God has already placed you in. And just imagine if each of us were to step up 
as a queen and see the circumstances that we are seeing, that we are in as solutions for the kingdom. If each kingdom was to strengthen, then the empire is just going to prosper. You have to remove yourself from the equation and see how we are serving God, especially as women. I'm just going through the notes that I have written down where I want just to see what I want to say next. All right, so this is the story of how I mentioned in the beginning about womanhood. How I said that by default I compared ourselves to flowers and seeds and expansion and prosperity. The interesting thing is that God himself has mentioned us women with the word health, field, tilt in the Quran in Surah Baqarah Ayah 223 to quote, your wives, your women are your fields. So go into your fields whichever way you like and send something good ahead for yourselves. And the ayah continues. Fields, prosperity, expansion, sustainability. What do you think if God decided to remove all women from earth? Do you think this world can survive? No. Do you see the power? Do you see the responsibility that God has given us? But... At the same time, I want to say that being a woman and being in your power is not limited to being a mother. Mother is just one of the roles assigned to us with womanhood. Because even when you look at the wives of the Prophet, let's look at our own Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except for Khadija radiallahu anha, none of the wives had kids. When we look at Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam he did not have his wife Sarah Sarah how you pronounce it she did not have a child for a really long time and she was in questioning her womanhood so we see that by default there are so many women leaders that are made mention of by God for us to look up to who weren't necessarily mothers and God himself says that children and wealth and children are nothing but the adornments of this world. So being a mother, being the ability to be a mother as a woman is amazing, but that's not what you are limited by. So when I'm talking about womanhood, please do not only confine yourself again to the role of being a mother, the role of being a wife. But I'm inviting you to expand and see the bigger vision. Expand and see the bigger game that God wants you to play. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Sorry, I got a phone call. I must have gotten disrupted. Sorry about that. So, I want you to take a deep breath, inhale, I want you to integrate everything that we are learning because now we are going to go into a session of healing and decoding. So all this was groundwork that we did to understand, to expand us beyond the victimhood. And now we are really going to step into the most interesting part of healing and decoding. If you are ready, take a deep breath, get comfortable, think of all, be present to all the thoughts that's happening in your mind, be aware to all the feelings that you feel in your body. How does it feel to know that you are a queen? Do you feel threatened? Do you feel frustrated? Bring awareness to whatever you are thinking. Bring awareness to whatever you're feeling at this moment. Because 
it holds hints to the next steps that you can take to step into your next level. So while we are going to go through this healing and deconditioning phase in this masterclass before we wrap up, I invite you to be aware. I invite you to make a decision that you are going to take a stand for abundance and prosperity. So we start off by praising God and thanking Him for sending the prophets to guide us and giving us the scriptures that teach us for giving us the capacity to reflect and ponder, for gifting us with the intellect that enables us to reason. We invite God's mercy in this gathering. Ya Allah, I seek your help to open up so I, might, I may live the vision that you have for me. The God all the doubts that I have been holding on in my soul, in my mind, in my heart about what is possible for me, of whether I am worthy. I seek your help and guidance to help me heal and decondition from that so I can start playing bigger as the queen you created me. So I can stop questioning about what you can make available for me and start leading with my power than being trapped by victimhood. Ya Allah, I ask you to witness me in this moment as I try to understand my own limitations, my own ways as to how I'm self-sabotaging myself so I may lead in a way that brings me closer to you and makes me of those who you are most pleased with, makes me a soul who puts a smile on you. So I may be of benefit for myself, for my own soul, that for my own body that will be testifying against me or for me on Kiyama. I ask you to open me and may this session be an activation that's going to change my life forever. I mean, thank you so much for bringing me here to this place where I'm consciously working on upgrading my life. Thank you so much for choosing me to be present in this powerful conversation so I can disrupt the norm and cut the cord for generations to come of women questioning of what is capable for them. I mean. So talking about healing and deconditioning, I wanted to do it in this setting, specifically looking at the women in the past. Because I feel that when God created Adam salam and Hawa salam, Adam and Eve, He created both of them in a very honorable way. Both of them closest to Him. But somewhere along the line, devil played tricks and put everyone trapped in a circle so we are not connected to the prosperity that is available for us. So I'm going to look, we are going to be looking at some women in history that God, some of them of whom God himself has commended. God himself has told us to look up to them as examples and see how we can tune into the prosperity code, the mindset of those women. Not necessarily looking at their story because we have in, heard enough of the stories of powerful women of the past. We are not here for story time that makes us feel good, but we are here to be activated. We are here to be transformed. We are here to be changed. So I want to look at things on a deeper level rather than the surface level story of this is what happened, this is what she said. And I want to start off with no one other than the wife of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khadija radiallahu anha. We know that before she married the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she was already married twice and widowed. In a sense, she was not a virgin, but she was going to marry a virgin man who was also 15 years about, there are difference of narrations, but about 15 years younger to him, to her. You see, by the way, by this powerful woman named Khatija radiallahu anha, who God destined to be the wife of our Prophet, 
that it was not an accident. She was such a powerful woman who had so much self-esteem, who had so much self-worth that it did not stop her or it did not make her hesitant that when a proposal came and she saw Muhammad as a good husband, someone who would be a good husband and a good father for her children, her age, her, how her virginity was, all these things that the society seems to make a big deal about, it did not stop her from sending the proposal. Can we tune into the frequency of the confidence, the self-esteem, the self-worth that Abu Mata Khatija radiallahu anha had? Can we connect to get to that? Can we feel that? Can we take a moment to feel the energy she must have had, the self-confidence she must have had to send a proposal to a virgin, young, good-looking, handsome, honest, from a good tribe, from a noble lineage, a really amazing man. Let's remove prophethood from the prophet, right? If that's that, what's going to stop us from looking at the depth of her confidence. We live 1,400 years away from when this incident happened. And we say now we are more open-minded than we were in the past. Yet here we are questioning our self-worth. Not really tap into the confidence that we can tap into. Can you feel the power she must be holding as a woman? The confidence she must be having? The fact that she was not a virgin, the fact that she was widowed, the fact that she already had children, the fact that she was so much older than this young guy, this young man, did not stop her from sending a proposal. She took a stand to create the circumstances that she desired. After this session, I want you to step into the life with not feeling apologetic about your desires, but seeing it as divine indications of how your life could be made better. And I want you to walk in your power and let go of the shell of victimhood so you can see as an alpha queen how you can create your circumstances. We know as Khadija radiallahu anha, as the wife of the Prophet, but did you also take a moment to reflect how being married to the Prophet was once a dream in her mind? She saw this good-looking guy. She saw this man with a great character. And she saw how he would be an amazing husband, an amazing father. But she did not let, quote-unquote, the limitations stop her from creating the circumstances. She married the man she desired, didn't she? She had amazing children with him, didn't she? But this was once a vision. This was once a dream in her mind. But she set forth and created the circumstances. She sent the proposal. She hired the prophet. And she made her vision a reality because she decided to walk in her power. She was not questioning herself. Let's move on. When we talk about women, we talk about, oh my goodness, women should be shy, women should stay hidden, women should stay protected. But let's talk about a woman who was protected, who was shy, who was in fact living a life which completely surrounded in the servitude of God. Even before she was born, she was destined to be a woman whose life is going to be surrounding the servitude of God. And I'm talking of no one other than the mother of Jesus, the mother of Isa alayhi salam, Maryam alayha salam. Her life was in the synagogue, serving God, learning about the religion, being in her chamber. But this did not stop her from learning about how the world works. Because when God sent the angel to her bear, bearing the good news of how she is going to have a son, how she is going to have a child, she was not being shy in the sense timid. She was not being shy in the saying acting dumb. She was not being shy in the sense 
keeping quiet. She was a virgin woman. She was a girl, possibly. But she knew to ask the right questions with maturity. She asked, how can I have a child when no man has ever touched me? The angel did not come in this floating Casper figure. The angel came in the figure of a man. And this was a question she was asking a man who was talking about how she's going to have a child. Do you see the maturity she was acting with? She was an alpha queen. She was a woman. Do we have that type of maturity in our life that even when we are put in a spot that we don't expect at all, we can lead it with maturity? Imagine you are a woman whose life is dedicated even before you were born to be in the servitude of God and you were not going to have children because that's how things worked in according to the, if I can say, the teachings of the previous prophets, right? The teachings of different prophets change at that generation. That was one form in which you can show your righteousness. But this strange man shows up and says, hey, you're going to have a child. She was shocked. But that did not stop her from showing up with so much maturity and asking the right question. Can we make a decision that even when we are put in a spot that we don't expect, when people say things to us that we don't expect from them, when the circumstances change and even something so strange as giving birth to a child, that won't happen, what I'm saying. While you have not been touched by a man is going to happen, you can lead with maturity. Can we tune into that type of power? Can you feel and tap into the mature frequency of Maryam alayhi salam? And talking about shy women, we know the woman who suggested hiring Musa alayhi salam, Moses, to her father. She was a shy woman. God himself uses the word that she was walking with shyness. But her shyness did not stop her from speaking up when she had a good idea. But here we have a lot of women in the name of shy, they don't speak up the good ideas that God's putting in their mind because they don't see things, they don't see life as walking with God. They see it as there is God who is controlling the circumstances and here is them struggling to make a life, surviving, surviving. But when we walk life with God in the picture, with Ihsan, knowing that whatever comes through us is from God, which is why we say that whatever good comes to us is from God and whatever evil or whatever shortcoming is from our human nature. Even in this very light, whatever good I'm saying, it's not from me. I'm just like a ball of matter. But where are these words coming from? I'm not looking at a script. I've just got bullet points here. It's coming from God. I don't take credit for this. And this is me deciding to show up with my power to use the ideas that God's giving me to empower other people and make this world a better place and make an impact. But what about the ideas that God's giving you? Have you taken accountability for that? When you are being questioned, are you or are you sitting? And complaining about how God is not going to change your circumstances, how your stuff, how your financial status is bad. Are you going to stop blaming God? Just stop blaming God. Lead with your power. Create the circumstances. That's the power that God has given you. So don't let the fact that you were shy stop you because here is a woman who's, who was shy. God himself said suggested her idea to the father. She was interacting with a man. Can we be mature about it without making everything about sexuality? There is more. When the Prophet وسلم, he used to address the people standing near a tree and then slowly the crowd started getting bigger and bigger. Usually women were at the back of this gathering and when the crowd became bigger, there was a point 
where the women could not see and hear the Prophet properly. So there was an Ansari woman who went to the Prophet and volunteered to use her carpenter slave to build him a mimbar from which he can stand at a height and address the people. It was her idea and there was so much of people who benefited from it. She did not hesitate to go to the Prophet of God and tell, I can't hear you because the crowd's getting bigger. She didn't just complain, she had a solution. She said, can I build you the member with the resources that God has given me, not just the carpenter, but the idea itself. And then the Prophet used it. Can we ask for more? Can we ask for the things that we desire and create the circumstances? This is why I named this masterclass, Ask. There is more. When Aisha radiallahu anha was slandered, right? So there was in the wordings, if I can say, of today's context, they said that Aisha radiallahu anha cheated on the Prophet, her husband, with another man. And when she learned about it, she was so heartbroken. She needed a mental space. She needed a break. And the fact that she was married to the best of the best mankind did not stop her from asking him to take a break and go to her mom's place because she needed some mental space. She needed to be supported by her family. It did not stop her from asking what she wanted, the circumstances that she wanted to be created. There is more. We see when we recite the scripture, the Quran, the book that was given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I explain it this way because sometimes there are some non-Muslims who watch the uh, live, the video. So I wanted to make sense for them. That's why sometimes uh, the language that I use, the way I explain, it differs. Just wanted to put it out here. So as I was saying, so let me just read it to her. So we see sometimes in the Quran how Allah usually uses the masculine words. So. Um Salama, who was also a wife of the Prophet may Allah be pleased with her, went to the Prophet and said, why is that women are not mentioned in the Quran like men are mentioned in the Quran? She was concerned with it. But today she was, you know, forget about the feminist movement and all these kind of things. She had a problem. She wanted to know why God always mentions the masculine name. You know, the way the Arabic terminology, the Arabic grammar structure works, when a masculine word or noun is included, it automatically is general and even a feminine is included. So when God is talking about believers in a masculine form, it's not just talking to a man, it's talking to a woman as well. Hi, Ezra. Welcome to the live. It's talking to the woman as well. So this grammar existed but yet she had a problem why is god always using masculine words and not feminine words and how did the prophet respond in fact how did god himself respond he didn't say how dare she i destined her to be the wife of the prophet so she will be one of the leaders of heaven and she questions my word because we know the quran is the word of allah that was not the response of god that was never the response of God. Because if a God is a merciful God who is always listening, He wants you to be happy, He wants you to experience the abundance and the prosperity that He can make available for you. In return to her query, to make her smile, to make her heart smile, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah in uh, Surah Al Ahzab, ayah number 35. You must have read this ayah where it says, I'll just read a portion of it so you get it, right? Inna al Muslimina wal Muslimati wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minati wal Qanitina wal Qanita liba Sadiqina wal Sadiqati wal Sabirina wal Sabirat. So I'm, I'm ending the ayah here, but it goes on. It's The meaning does not change, but because she made this request, God went on. Okay, the man and the woman. The man who is believing Muslim, a woman who is a believing person, a devout man, a devout woman, truthful men, truthful women, patient men, patient women, humble men, humble women. Do you see how God responds in a way that fulfills your heart? 
there is more and we also know that there were women who were literally in battlefields like Nuseiba they even said oh my god what is it a woman wanting to be a warrior no she desired it and she created the opportunity by getting herself equipped and being there and also talking about this particular ayah about Um, Sal um Salama who had the problem of God on using masculine words we also know the very famous incident of uh, this woman who complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to went to the Prophet with a complaint to God saying how her husband was mistreating her she wanted a solution from God and that's the circumstances she wanted to create and she went to the Prophet and questioned him I have a problem that I, I have a complaint to God and God responded so this masterclass was created ask because this is an invitation for you we've been looking at so much of examples of the leaders that God has praised himself of how they asked and created the circumstances that they desired ask do not walk in victimhood ask ask for what you want ask for what you deserve and you deserve nothing but honor you deserve to enjoy the beautiful creations that God has created for you you deserve to be happy you deserve to have a fulfilling marriage you deserve to have obedient children you deserve to be given equal opportunities to seek knowledge you deserve to have the opportunity to basically create the circumstances to bring the ideas that God has given you to reality you deserve it ask ask walk in your power create the circumstances this was an idea once for me to host lives like this an idea in my mind but at that time because of the culture that I was born in because of the society I was in because of the family background for a woman to be online was a huge taboo but I kept asking, I asked God, I asked myself, I asked the people who were connected to me. I kept asking and asking and asking till today. The circumstances that I wanted to create, which was once a dream, once a desire in my mind, now is a reality because I'm talking to you. I have more dreams that I'm working on. I'm asking God, I'm asking myself as to how I can show up more in my power. And I'm asking you to join this movement. Just ask heal the condition what more proof do you want what more answers are you seeking before you are going to step into your power and ask the things that you deserve because when you lead yourself you're not just going to benefit yourself but everyone else who is connected to you would you ask would you dare to ask? How could you not ask being a woman who's created by God? Being a woman, if you really are saying that you have submitted your life to God, how can you not ask for greatness? How can you not ask for a better tomorrow? How can you not ask for a better life from the God who loves to give? Can you ask? Can you ask like Khadija radiallahu anha who wanted to marry a man who was much younger to her. She was widowed twice. She already had children. But she desired to marry this man who she, who she saw as a befitting husband and a father. But she asked and she created the circumstances. Can you ask like Aisha radiallahu anha who was slandered, who was heartbroken? But she wanted a mental space. The fact that she was married to the man who was mercy, rahmatullahi alameen, as a mercy for the mankind. God, Prophet was full, filled with mercy. His mercy was available for Aisha radiallahu anha, but she wanted a break. She wanted to be with her mom. She wanted to be with her dad. She needed the break and she asked and she created the circumstances. Can you ask like the woman who had a problem with the Prophet? who had a problem not with the prophet sorry had a problem with her husband and she went to a the prophet with a complaint to god and she asked 
Can you ask like Um Salama who asked, why is God only mentioning men mostly in the Quran and not women? Can we ask and create the circumstances like the woman of the past? The torch is here. Are we available? Are we ready to take the torch and move forward? So the women who, the women who are to come after us, who may be not born yet, have better circumstances than what we were born into. Can we carve out the destiny for them just like how Maryam alayha salam's mother said that when my child is born, I'm going to dedicate this child to God. And then when she gave birth to a girl and not a boy, she was like, oh my God, I give birth to a boy, a girl. And then Allah said that the woman is not like a boy. She's not the same as a man. And she, Allah had a plan to make her the virgin mother of Jesus, who is a great Messiah. So like the foresight of Maryam alayhi salam's mother, she said that she's going to dedicate this child to God. Can we each dedicate our soul that we are going to make a better world with the power that we have instead of being in a victimhood? We are where we are. It's not an accident. Nobody is saying that things are going to be easy. But what we know is that when we walk in our power, walking with confidence in the truth that God's by our side, there is no stopping us. So this is why I'm inviting you to ask. Soak the stories. Rewatch this, re this live if you have to. When, we are, when I mentioned about, I, I didn't even mention all the women. I just mentioned key figures. When you are re-listening, try to tap into the frequency. Imagine that you are in the position of Khadija radiallahu anha. Will you ask for this marriage that you desire? Will you ask that burning question that you have? Will you go with this pain in your heart and ask for what you want? So with this, inshallah, I leave you praying that this message reached you in the way that it was meant to reach you that this serves you well and this activates you to ask ask from god ask from yourself to step up and play bigger and ask with anyone who is connected to or who is hindering you from creating the things that you deserve for you so we'll end with dua <sighs> Let's take a deep breath, integrate it. Let's end with dua. Ya Allah, I ask you for these lessons from this life to integrate into my soul. Ya Allah, I ask of you to guide me, to expand me, and to heal me, and to decondition me, so I may become a woman who is walking in her power, to create the circumstances that I deserve. Ya Allah, I know that you want me to be happy. I know you want me to be smiling. I know that you don't wish pain upon me. I know you don't wish hardship upon me. I know your words are true and the promise of there is ease in hardship is true. Ya Allah, I'm promising right now, this very moment, that I'm taking a stance to not playing small, but being more connected to you, to living life more consciously, thinking about the big vision that you have of how I can contribute in the best of ways to the vision that you have for the benefit of mankind, seeking your pleasure and closeness to you. Ya Allah, I ask you to always guide me, to always remind me of how whatever I'm doing is not for me, but for you, for the fulfillment of your vision. Ameen. Thank you everyone who joined me live and who watched the replay. It's, it got pretty dark. <laughs> so as the background got darker, I'm looking paler and paler. Thank you so much for everyone who joined in. I want to wrap up saying 
that on 26th and 27th inshallah we are going to be having a closed container not like something like a group coaching program where we're going to talk about communication and asking on a much deeper level so like i mentioned in this live when we are looking at the stories of the women that we discussed it was not necessarily from oh this is what she did but trying to tap into her frequency so what we will be doing in the paid program that is coming up on the 26th and that will happen on the 26th and 27th of november inshallah is we will be looking at techniques the languages tips strategies hands on of how you can create the life that you desire it's not just like oh i have a desire i'm going to create it there is this elevation that has to happen within you as a being like i mentioned you know previously this was always a vision that i had a desire that i had to be able to put my face here online to talk what i desire without wondering about what will people think and you know the people pleasing i was a people pleaser once healed people pleaser here so there were a lot of things that i learned and i healed from so i have gathered all the lessons that i've learned over a decade if i can say of how you can create the circumstances that you like because it's not just about oh this is what i want i'm going to create it it takes a certain level of emotional intelligence there are strategies of art of communication all of the tools and the baggages that you need handy that can help enhance this journey for you so you don't have to feel the resistance as much because there is going to be resistance there's going to be hardship allah said that there is ease with hardship but hardship exists so i truly believe the tools and the content that we are going to discuss in the master class that will happen on 26th and 27th november let me just check the calendar yeah 26 it's going to be a two day event a weekend over the weekend i believe let me double check on the calendar sorry it will be on 26 27th a friday and saturday if you feel called if you are ready to step into the next level i highly recommend that you invest in yourself because this is going to be a game changer you may not have to cry as much you don't may not have to have as much arguments as possible because that was how it was my journey for me it was with a lot of pain a lot of tears a lot of arguments that i could have avoided if not for if not if i had the knowledge that i will be teaching you on the 26th and 27th it's going to be all the lessons that i gathered over a decade like i said and i would really love to see you there so if you feel called drop me a message either on facebook or on instagram i will reach out for you at the moment the investment for this program is just 97 dollars imagine 97 dollars for a two day event the price will definitely go up uh, to 111 dollars at least so this is a good time i don't know when i will feel called to increase the price maybe i will even notch it up to 222 dollars i don't know just waiting for guidance from god but at the moment the investment is 97 dollars and if you feel called i would really love to host you in this uh, group setting where we will be talking about how you can create the circumstances that you desire using emotional intelligence art and communic art of communication relationship tips it's going to be a holistic program if you benefited from this free master class if this free master class this free content activated you then i don't think i have to keep talking more because i'm not here to um convince anyone i'm just extending an invitation to the self led woman because i don't treat you as someone who is stuck in victimhood i see every woman who comes in my world as a self led leader because i'm not trying to be a leader but i'm hoping to inspire more women empower more women to be leader so we can walk shoulder to shoulder expanding the army of god So if this is something that you feel aligned to then I pray that it reaches you well drop me a DM either me or 
my teammate will get back to you. Till next time, this is me, your host, Shamima Shah Jahan, signing off saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be upon you.